Hey guys, this is Victor Baker, luthier and guitarist in New York City, and welcome back to the Guitar Shop Block. This is episode 11, and today I'm going to show you some sound hole machining, some soundboard plate carving, and um, I got a request this time around for some cello style F holes on one of my Model 15 guitars. And years ago, I had doodled around with it, looking at some um, cello pictures and some diagrams, and I already kind of had it laid out in my CAD program. Those are the pictures you're seeing there. And I uh, finally got a request for it. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. It looks really cool. As you guys know, I'm, pretty, I'm a pretty big fan of the cello vibe with a lot of the stains and finishes that I do. I try to make it look like an old beat-up upright bass on some of those guitars but um, yeah I tried to bring in that that um, profile the sound hole profile from you know the Stradivarius style and adapted to the guitar and these videos kinda go through the process of how it's machined into the top of the guitar basically since the arch of the guitar is mapped out inside the computer program um, you know, I've worked on that for years to get the right shape, the right contours, and the right graduations. And um, but now I can use it in, in more modern ways since it's integrated into the computer. What I do is I project the shape of that F hole onto the surface of that guitar, and uh, it's called a cutting path. I'll just run a small tool along that cutting path until it drops the f-hole out. It's a pretty cool, really clean way of making the uh, openings and they're obviously super consistent and uh, yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun. There's another um, guitar later in this video that has a super unique cat's eye shape. I've, I've had um, a cat's eye design for the sound holes for you know many years but um, I got a request to do them in reverse this is the second time I'm doing them there's a uh, guitar that has it on my uh, portfolio page on the website and the person who commissioned this guitar wanted the same thing for his guitar and uh, it's a lot of fun doing them it's it's a unique look so you'll see that in this video I sat there with my phone and shot these little videos um, when I was machining these sound holes. It's it's a uh, it's amazing to watch how accurate the machine does stuff. And um, you know, normally you would cut these out with a, a small saw and clean up the edges. And you know, I'm all for doing that kind of stuff too. Um, but I've always been a forward-thinking person and. I think most luthiers would take advantage of any tooling they have available to them no matter what generation they're from. And this is what's available to me so this is how I do it. This guitar is going to have a uh, humbucker cut out for the neck position pickup and that, that's just the cutting pads there. I do start that cutout with a scribe pass you can see that little line there that helps with uh, the spruce not chipping out learned that over the years to do that here's the profile of the guitar being cut and there you go there's the sound there's the soundboard everything all cut cut into it and uh, that that profile is oversized and uh, you know it'll be trimmed down to the rims when it's after it's installed and moving on to another soundboard, this is the first couple roughing passes. First I'll plane the bowl side, the inside of the soundboard, so that it sits flat on the machine. And then I'll flip it, and these are the roughing passes for creating the arch. The, uh, the programming compensates for the tool size of the bit, you know, like how big it is and whether it's round or flat and it follows the contour of the CAD program what the uh, soundboard is 
create some roughing passes. You know, there's a whole, te you know, technique I use for programming this sort of stuff. Um, and here's those reverse sound, those reverse cat's eyes. The, uh, the little cutter is going around there following one of those engraving paths. And, uh, there you go. It's just about to drop out. They usually drop down to the table, and I can kind of push them out of the way. And, uh, this is a pretty big opening. The last guitar I did with this, I made sound hole plugs for it. So it was really nice when they were they were, you know, without the sound hole plugs, the guitar had a really big acoustic sound because there's a lot of opening there for sound to come out of the guitar. But, uh, you know, for ensemble playing, gig playing, I made these insertable sound hole plugs to close that opening. And uh, then it becomes a much more versatile instrument. You can do even more with it. Closing the sound hole opening with a plug prevents, you know, external sound, you know, like stage volume or drums, bass, prevents it from getting inside the guitar and starting, you know, vibrations that you don't want, um, you know, that, you know, results in feedback. But uh, having it having it open is really nice for it at home practice, or you can even mic it up too if you want to have a really acoustic sound in a uh, in a recording or something. I've seen people doing that. That's cool stuff. And maybe create a blend between the acoustic and electric sound. Okay guys, there's episode 11. Just a quick little peek at what, what I'm doing to some soundboards at the shop. I hope you've been enjoying the music in the background there too. That's me and my band doing some rehearsing. And, um, I'm going to include some of that music in, in the next video. I have some of the uh, winter guitars um, all finished up and I'm going to post some pictures of those, talk about those instruments and uh, hopefully you'll stop back for that and thanks for watching. <laughs>